Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the coordinate system in the Dipti file. To begin with, let me use DSS Studio to open a simple Dipti file. Here, go to the Tools tab, click on View Images, and here I'm opening a Dipti file of the Ammonite T1 weighted template. As you can see on the left lower corner, there are two coordinate systems. One is IJK, another one is a XYZ. The IJK system, as you flip it and showing here, are the addresses for the computer program to store voxel data in the memory. So those values started from zero and increased by one. They are only integers. There's no floating point. As you can see, zooming in, each voxel is like a cubicle here. Each of them has a unique IJK value integer, allowing the program to store the value. And the XYZ coordinate system we are more familiar with is in an unit of millimeter. Let's turn on the grid here. You can see the zero, the origin of the coordinate is somewhere in the branch midline around the interior coming show. So this XYZ represent the real world coordinate is a continuous space. There could be floating point if your bustle size is some millimeter. And the conversion between the RJK and XYZ is through this S row matrix. The S row matrix includes three sets of value, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. In each set of the value, there are three scaling variable in addition to the translocation variable. So the computation of the conversion is done by this. From the IJK integers converting to the continuous system of XYZ, there are three scaling variable multiplied by the IJK value and added another translocation variable. So as you can see here, if we want to verify where the S, Y, Z space are the same, they have to look at the S row matrix and also the I, J, K coordinates. Both of them, when they multiply together, then we can measure whether the S, Y, Z coordinates are consistent or not. To show you an example, here I'm going to open another empty file. That's the FSL's FA template. The information is showing here, the image size, you can see they are different. And the S row matrix are also different. So one thing we can confirm is that the voxel address will be of course different because the image size are not the same. But whether they are in the same space at the SYZ space, well, we cannot quickly jump to the conclusion because that involve a the role of the astral matrix here. So here I'm going to show example how to convert this voxel coordinate to another. So once it, the first step I'm going to do is to make sure the, the image size are the same. Through the volume menu, there's a resize function. So here you could change the image size by padding zero. Now I'm changing it to the same to the right. So now the image size are the same. Then I'm going to change the S row value. You see here the value is not the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy the value using the set transformation function. So instead of changing the value, I just copy it here. And then to transform this S row, I need to go to the volume menu. There's a transform function. The original value of the S row is showing here. And now I just passed the one I copy from the right and click OK. So once this transformation is done, you can see the Im image size are the same and the S row matrix are also the same. Now we can verify whether the S, Y, Z space, these two brains are aligned all together. 
So one thing I could do is turn on the overlay and change the contrast here. And then to see if they align well. So turning on, turning off, and you can see that the gyro folding matches. And in this way, we could confirm that these two adders are from the same space. And the way we change the image size and transform the astro matrix allow us to convert the voxel code then from one to another and checking whether these two images are in the same space. Thank you for watching this video and hope this helped with understanding the coordinate system in the Nifty file.